It's late at night and I've been working on these suckers all day. Hey, it's Carrie with Canary Quilts and we are on week five of the Tula Pink Butterfly Quilt. And we are doing half square triangles right here. And these flying geese I have right here. The flying geese come second and you will be very happy to do these. They don't take very long. They're two colors and they're very simple to do. These aren't hard blocks to build. It's figuring out the colors you need and how many you need. And I think the pattern is really well, well, well written. The hard part is just trying to figure these out. How many of each one of these you need and some of them match the blocks are going next to. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to put these colors together and I show you what I did and how I organized. So each of my colors have this number on them. I don't know if that's there if you can see the number. Yeah it's number two so that I could organize the colors so I wouldn't have to be figuring out which fabrics these were. So I show you why I do that. You'll see um, when I start putting it together. Also, I show you how to put these together per the pattern. I mean, if you're here, you've probably done half square triangles in the past. So I show you how the pattern shows you, but I also show you how I paper piece them. I got some paper piece templates for the, the size of half square triangles and I show you that if you're interested in doing it that way. I prefer that way. Not a lot of people, well I shouldn't say not a lot, some people don't like to paper piece so they may not like it, but I prefer to do it that way. It takes the same amount of time so it doesn't save time or anything like that, it's just a preference. So you'll see both ways to put these together. But anyway, if you're new here, I'm not trying to discourage you from doing this quilt because I've done the hard work for you right here. If you go to my website, I have listed out all the colors and how many you need of each of them. So that's already done. You don't have to sit down for two hours and try to figure that out. So if you want to do this quilt, it's I have everything linked below. You can buy the fabric kit and the pattern. They're two separate things. If you want to go back and watch my first video, I go through the fabric kit. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You'll get notified as I put these up. And if you want to just watch me put this together, um, you can do that too. And you'll get notified when I do my next one. But we have a lot of other fun stuff on this channel. Whew. So, let's get started. Well, when I looked ahead at this, I knew that this would probably be, it's not a difficult square or block to make. It's the figuring out the colors that was going to be difficult. So, I knew that when we got to this, it was going to take a bit of work. So today we're doing the half square triangles and we're doing the flying geese. And the half square triangles here, she has them broken down by color, which isn't much of a help. <laughs> so when I was trying to figure these out, I went through and went, okay, I need four of this color, four of this color. It says six of this color, six of this color, 12 of this color, four. And so I did that at first. But then as I started pulling colors and looking at the quilt, it didn't, it, it sort of fell that way. I ended up combining some of these colors and I don't, I don't know what these grays are, so I didn't use them. I ended up with the exact same amount of squares that we need without knowing what those are and looking at the pattern and getting all the colors we need. So two things here for me personally is that I didn't have any more red and then there was another place where I needed um, a, the blossom fabric and I don't have enough of that left either. So I had to compromise in those two places and it, it will be fine. But if you have those two colors left 
you can use them where I specify, but I just won't be using them there. The other thing was I tried to break these down into like, this dark fabric is going to be my number one. This is going to be my number two. These are my number three, number four. So five is the 12, but I have four fabrics in number five. So that's I had to go back and I didn't have room to adjust all my numbers. I've been working on this for a couple hours, so that's kind of how it's going to be. I'm going to have five, number five is going to be four different fabrics. I tell you how many to cut of each, which will be four of each. So you'd get 16 squares out of number five. So I know I have a lot of notes on here. I kind of, I just kind of use this as a guide and then I made all my notes over here in my book. When I wrote down like all these numbers on the left are how many squares I need of each and when I wrote all those down and then added it all up I got the number of squares I needed for this part of our pattern. So it's hard, it's really hard to do, go by just these colors here. I had to look at the quilt. Um, there's like two of these light colors and I'm like there's nowhere here that there's just, because you have to double everything. There's nowhere that it's just one of these on each side. So that's how I've approached this. All of this is going to be on my, I'm going to run through it, but all of this is going to be on my website. Um, how I, all the colors I used and how many squares of each that I need. So we've got our background fabric. We use some of our background fabric in the body, which we're going to get to. That's going to be next week. Um, but this is the first time we're going to be using our background fabric here. I'm going to run through my colors, but I bought this, uh, it's like a paper piecing where you can make four squares at a time. And I'm going to show you how I use these. I'm also going to show you how the pattern tells you to make it, but I am probably going to do 90% of my squares this way. So I'll show you how to use these. I don't mind paper piecing. I enjoy it. I just think it'll give me a more precise square. This one they have you make a bigger half square triangle and then cut it down to size. In the pattern that's how they have you do it. So I hope I don't confuse you. Oh and another reason I numbered all my fabrics was so that when we get to the sections I can write the numbers in the section so I know which of these half square triangles I need. So when we get to the sections, not only will I have the numbers for the half square triangles, I will also tell you what color I'm using in case you didn't number yours. It's how I'm doing it because I just, it could be a mess if I don't keep it organized by numbers like this. Okay, so let's walk through the fabrics. I have 25 and that's with uh, some of these having four fabrics or two fabrics in a number. So we need our background fabric. We're going to cut 68 squares if you're following the pattern. If you're going to be doing this, it'll be different. You'll have bigger squares you're cutting. I'm going to set that aside. Pull this down. Keep this here just so I know. So number one is going to be our moonflower. I've marked this. Not only have I marked this number one, but I've put that I need four half square triangles out of this. So this makes four. So I will be all set with one of these sections. So per the pattern, you'll need to cut two squares out of this because when you put the two squares together with the background, you'll be sewing and cutting and you'll get four. You'll end up with four half square triangles. I'm putting in here that I need four half square triangles so that when I get to it, I know what I need and how to cut it. Number two is amethyst. And again, I need four half square triangles out of that. Number three, and it said we need six. I only counted four. This is kind of where I started to deviate. So my number three fabric is dahlia and I need four half square triangles. Number four fabric is foxglove. And I pretty much started, let me pull this out real quick. I started up here and then I worked my way down and there's some over here and they correspond together here. But I just started looking and counting and figuring it out from there, from literally looking at the pattern. So, so we're working from the top of the butterfly down. 
So number four is foxglove, and we're going to need four half square triangles. So number five is where they call for all of these pinks. I broke it down into four fabrics because that's what it is on the quilt. So number five is four different fabrics, and I have written here four half square triangles from each fabric. So I have thistle, I have stargazer, I have azalea, and agate. So that's in my number five. So here is where I had to make a compromise. Six and seven would have been peony and carnelian, which is red, and I have used up all my red. If you have red, you can do four peonies, four carnelians. But I don't have red, so I'm doing eight peonies. So I need eight half square triangles out of that one. Next, we have, as my number eight fabrics, the two snapdragons, the floral and the solid. I need four half square triangles from each of these. And then we've got begonia is my number nine, four half square triangles. Number 10, another compromise here. Here you would need four persimmon, which is this one, and four blossoms. I don't have enough blossom, so I am doing eight persimmons here. So if you have enough blossom, you can do four persimmons, four blossoms. So those are the two compromises I had to make. Number 11 is morganite, and we need four, four half square triangles. 12 is amber, four half square triangles. 13 is pear, four half square triangles. 14 is sunshine, four half square triangles. 15, daisy and citrine, four of each of these. Four half square triangles from each. 16, I couldn't figure out that was as gray, so I don't have a 16. <laughs> I had to skip it. I thought maybe I could figure it out at the end, had to skip it. So 17 is these three fabrics and I just grouped a bunch of these down here. We have lime, spring, and chameleon. Four half square triangles from each of these three colors here. 18, peacock, four half square triangles. 19, again, grouped these three. And I have agave, aquamarine, and topaz here. Four half square triangles from each of these also. So 20 is iris, four half square triangles. 21, delphinium, four half square triangles. 22, lupine, four half square triangles. 23, deep sea, four half square triangles. 24, sapphire, four half square triangles. Yep, that's a four. <clears throat> and finally, 25, this last one, this dark one, is celestial. Four half square triangles. So that's how I am organizing mine. And when I get done with the half square triangles, I'm going to leave the number in the group. So I'll have four half square triangles with background in this color, and I'm going to leave the number one grouped with those four so that when I get to the sections, I will have numbered where these go. So I can grab, like, if I see it, it's number one, I can grab number one. I don't have to try to look and see which fabric this is. So, <clears throat> that's probably the hardest part of these blocks. Other than doing a whole bunch of them, this was the hardest part. So I'm going to go over to my website I will show you the numbers I'm using, how the fabric I'm using, and how many half square triangle units you will need from those colors. That's how, we'll, how I will be breaking it down so that when we get to the sections, you'll understand why I'm picking out my number one or my number two or something like that. So if you have a better way of organizing this, then go for it. I applaud you. Um, let me know in the comments if, how you organize this, if you did it differently. Now that I've gone through how I got my fabrics and what fabrics I'm using, 
Let's get ready to do these. I'm going to get my cuts ready and I'm going to show you how the pattern tells you to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do this one, the paper piece roll. And if you think you want to do the paper piece roll and you like the way it looks, then I have a link down below for this. I have used the Flying Geese paper piece before and I really liked it. Um, so I think I'm going to really like this too. I'm going to get my pieces cut and then we'll come back here and we'll start putting this monstrosity of colors together. <laughs> Okay, I'm here with my cuts, and I went ahead and put some together because I just wanted to test how to do them. Pretty easy to do, and I did both. I did the way they tell you to do in the pattern and the paper piece. So, I've got quite a few here, and I've got them separated by their number. Number 1 has 4, number 24 has 4, so pretty easy. Number 10 has 8, so that's what they look like. And I'm sure if you've done any kind of quilting, you've probably come across half square triangles. I have, for the way they tell you to do it in the pattern, these are the cuts. You're going to have a square of your color fabric and a square of the background. And if you're not doing any paper piecing, you'll have 68 of these squares. And you'll have to mark them all on the diagonal like this. So the way we put these together is we put them right sides together. And the right side would be the non-marked side. Come on, fabric. And I will clip these. And then we're going to sew on the diagonal. Uh, not on the diagonal. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from that diagonal on both sides. So I'm going to use my quarter inch foot. There's my quarter inch foot. And I just take this quarter inch right here and I put it right on that line like that. And then when I'm sewing right down that line, I'm going to have a quarter inch seam um, away from that line. And then I'm going to do the other side. And then we'll come back and we'll cut on the line, iron towards the color. So let's get started with the way the pattern says to do it. Okay, I'm over here at my machine and I've got my quarter inch foot in. And I'm going to put my foot down so that the quarter inch lands right on the line. And then I'm just going to start sewing, keeping that on that line. I'm going to bring my other one in. And we're going to chain piece these. And we'll turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. our quarter inch seam on both sides of the line. So we've got these sewn so we have a quarter inch seam on either side of the line and I am going to cut right on that line we drew. And we get two blocks and we need four for this number 11 fabric now we've got four. So at this point we are going to iron towards the color. And there we have four blocks but they do need to be trimmed. We need two and a half inch finished block so what I'm going to do we have three inch basically three inch right now I'm going to put my line this diagonal on the seam and then I'm going to put it two and three quarters inch down here on these sides and trim it and then I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to put it so my two and a half inch falls on the edges and my diagonal line is still on that seam and there we've got our 
two and a half finished, two and a half inch finished, whoops, half square triangle block. And there we go. We need four of these. That's what we got. And I'm just going to line them up so that they're, the colors are opposite of each other so it lays better. It's number 11 fabric, and I'm going to pin that back onto these so I know what they are. So that's how the pattern tells you how to do it. So now let's do the paper piecing one. I like to paper piece, so I think I'm going to prefer this way, and I did like it when I tested it to begin with. But... <clears throat> What you need for paper piecing is, here's a section of what it looks like. Triangles on a roll is in one of them. Directions are in another. This is the center, basically. And if you were to do this square right here, you would end up with eight blocks, which is, I need eight of them out of this fabric. So that's why I have one square here. So you cut a six and a half piece of fabric of your color and a six and a half inch piece of the background for this. And this will give us eight squares. For the rest of these, I need four squares. So half of this will give you four squares. One, two, three, four. So I cut it in half on this line and I've attached it to a three and a quarter by six and a half inch piece of fabric, your color fabric. This is number nine. So I've got three and a quarter inch by six and a half inch piece of fabric here. And then I went and cut all the pieces I need, three and a quarter inch, six and a half inch of background. I don't remember how many I need. 25? I think I needed 25 or something like that. But anyway, all you have to do is count the number of papers you have here. And that'll tell you how many of your background pieces you'll need. So I'll show you how to do one of these. And I'll show you how to do this one. Basically, they're the same thing, but I will go through them. So let's start with number nine. We are going to take our fabrics and we're going to put them right sides together. And then we're going to take our paper and put it on top of it, basically centered, so that our outside lines there's fabric all the way around it. I use clips. You can use pins. You can pin your papers right down, like right here, here, and here, if you want to. I'm just a clip person. When I need pins, I do pull them out. But clips will work. So, this is our number nine fabric. This will give us four of our Tri half square triangles that we need. So at this point, you're going to go over to our machine. Oh, I want to show you. I am going to use this foot because it has this red arrow, and I can take that red arrow and put it right on these dotted dashed lines, I guess, just like that. And I'm going to sew on the dashed lines in the air in the direction the arrows tell me to. So that's the foot I'm going to use. Also, set your machine to a smaller stitch length. My default is 2.2. I'm going to set it at 1.5 so that we can perforate this paper and it will rip off easier. So we're going to go over to the machine with our shortened stitch and we're going to sew down here, up here, down here, and up here. And I'll show you how to trim it up. So, yeah, let's head over to the machine. Okay, I'm over here at the machine. I've got my stitch length set smaller to 1.5. Now I have it set to 1.5. Default is 2.2, so it is a shorter stitch length. And then we are going to, I'm going to put my red arrow right there, and we're going to follow this dashed line. Turn it. Notice I'm starting off the paper.
Now we are going to cut all the lines out on all the solid lines. All right, there's my first piece with all the um, lines sewn right here and there and there and there. So we are now going to trim all the solid lines. I need a bigger. I do the outside lines first. Now do that middle line. And to line it up, just make sure you have something that squares it up over here too. Doesn't matter what the dimensions are. You just want it to be square. And then cut it down that center line. Then that because we did a such a small stitch, see it just pulls right off. That paper gets perforated and it pulls off. Now we'll iron these. And you can trim those tails. So there we go. Two and a half inches. And let's get these lined up, put our number nine on, and that's how you do the paper piecing. So the rest of these will be exactly like that one. This one pretty much is exactly like that one. We're going to put right sides together, put it in the middle. I am going to, don't lose your little marker, I am just going to clip all these edges. And I'm going to start right here and come down, come off, come out, come off, come out, and like this. Start out here, turn, hit that corner, turn, hit this corner, turn, and then sew out the outside. So that's how I'm going to do it. Let's take it over there. Okay, I'm over here at my machine. I'm going to do the eight-piece paper piece. And I'm just going to start sewing. There's the outside lines, and I'm going to go over here. I start over here because these dash lines go off the paper. So that's why I'm starting there. And I need to actually start this way because the arrows go this way. So, follow the arrows. You're gonna go right off the end there. So I've got all eight of these sewn up. We just need to cut them out. All my seams sewn in the direction of the arrows on the dash lines. So now we just need to cut, cut it out on the side of the line. So I'm going to start on the outside. Okay, rip the papers off and then iron towards the dark fabric. Okay, I've got all my pieces ironed towards that dark fabric. And I'm just going to trim the tails off. So there you go. There's how you do eight pieces with the paper piece. And I showed you how to do the four pieces. And I showed you how to do it per the pattern, which was these pieces. So quite a few of these, about half of these I did the way the pattern was. 
And then the rest I'm going to do paper piece because I prefer paper piecing. Um, so I've shown you both. You can do it whichever way you like. I, the, pat, the way the pattern is is not a problem at all. Um, I just prefer paper piecing and I wanted to show you that. Um, these, I do have a link for these down below if you think you would like these. Um, I really like them. And that's how I'm going to do them. But uh, anyway, I'm going to finish all these paper pieces up. We'll come back. We'll have all our half square triangles done. Phew! Oh my goodness gracious. That was a lot of work. So <clears throat> make sure you carve out some time for these. It really did... I knew it was going to be a lot of work. It took me longer than I thought it would, to be honest. And it wasn't because of the paper piecing. I feel like to get four done on paper piecing was exactly the same to get four done uh, the other way. So, so I feel like I spent more time going over colors than I did actually showing you how to make these blocks. It's time to get up and stretch my back. And it's time to move on to flying geese, which is literally... They look very simple and don't take very long at all. And they're two colors. Two colors! Let me know how it went for you, if you've uh, done this or not, or what's your, what's your plan for all of this stuff here. But yeah, let's move on. Let's, uh, well, let's get up and stretch, and then let's move on to the flying geese. So yeah, good job, man. Good job. We've got two flying geese units to do today and this shouldn't be too hard. These are going to go right here on either side of this yellow section and so I picked out my two colors. These are the two colors we're going to use and remember you need double of all the cuts they tell you in here because we're making two. So pretty simple. I got my little alpha bitties this time because I only need the numbers one and two. And again, those are on my website. But we're just going to use these to make our flying geese. I mean, it's just like I make most flying geese. We're going to take one of the opposite color squares, put it over here, sew on the diagonal, trim a quarter of an inch, and iron probably towards the corner. I haven't looked yet. So anyway... Let's get started doing this. This won't take very long at all. Yay! I like that. Okay, to get ready to make our flying geese units, the gray floral here, you will have eight squares and six of these rectangles. And then with the pair units, you'll have four of the rectangles and 12 of the squares. So, to make the flying geese, we're just going to swap those two colors out and we're gonna mark the back of all of our squares on the diagonal so we don't need a quarter inch foot for this I just have a regular sewing foot here standard and uh, it does have this little red dot so I can keep the dot on the line as I'm sewing because we will be sewing on that line so I'm just gonna start on the left hand side Put my diagonal from the top middle to the bottom left and I'm going to get everything ready to sew at once and I'm going to chain piece all of these. So let's get all these sewn on that line. Okay, got my seam on there. I sewed on the line and I'm just going to separate all these before I trim them. I am going to put my quarter inch line on my ruler on the seam and then just trim it from there. Get these little threads off. So I'm going to get all these finished and then I'm going to iron towards the corner. Okay, let's take our pieces here and we are going to iron all of our square units towards that corner. Now we want to repeat for the other side. So I have my pair with the gray and I want to grab another gray, put it so that we're going from the top middle to the bottom right. 
sew on the line, trim a quarter inch from your seam, and iron towards the corner. And then we can meet right back here and we'll start putting our little flying geese units together. Here's my flying geese units that I finished. You will have four of the pair with the gray, and then you will have six of the gray with the pair corners. So we can start building these, and we're gonna have two of these. So that's why you have so many of these. We will start at the top with a gray. Then we're gonna add a gray. So we're gonna be building with these like arrows. They look like arrows is what they look like. And then we'll take, so you're just doing, once you get it started, you're just putting opposites up against each other. So we will sew these together and we will always iron toward away from the point, if you want to look at it that way, always iron away from the point towards the big triangle. So let's get these two put together. And I like to sew with my point on top to make sure my needle will be hitting the point. That way I should get a nice looking point. So let's just start, well, you know what? We could chain piece all these. We could put these two together. Okay, so get these sewn, quarter of an inch, bring it back and always iron away from the point towards the large triangle. Okay, I've got all my seams sewn and we want to iron away from the point. And then we want to come back here and add, add them back like this so we get these nice arrows are formed in the pair in the gray. So we can put these together. And then we can come back and add the final flying goose down here and we'll be done with our two units. There we go, there's our two flying geese units. Very quick and easy to put together, easy to cut. So yeah, shouldn't take you much time at all. Head over to my website if you want to see, if you want to see which fabrics I chose, but it's pretty obvious right here. There's just two fabrics, so. So let me know how your flying geese went. So let's wrap this up. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and learning the HSTs especially, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.